Thank you, Mark. I uh, really appreciate being here and seeing Mark last night with Steve Gold. I saw the next generation of the Gold grandchildren. Um, when I saw Jan and was sharing my three grandchildren, she was very upset that she didn't have grandchildren yet. Now she does. She's very happy. And the Gold gene pool is rapidly expanding and improving our universe. So uh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> In my talk, uh, I'll be talking about the, the, the wild and crazy time and the beginning of the drug culture in San Francisco and the beginnings of the West Coast branch of the field of addiction medicine. Dr. DuPont has eloquently described that this is the beginning of the drug epidemic that has caused such uh, damage to our society and mental illness. There are a number of infamous and famous characters from that time period. Uh, I'm competing with Doug Zidon as about who can take the most photos and tell the most stories. I don't have the time for that. One of the most infamous was Charles Manson. Came to our clinic, I wrote an article on him, and this afternoon I'll be interviewed on a national documentary uh, about our uh, Charles Manson who came to our clinic. Uh, the reason I mentioned that is that there's a number of books chronicling that period. This is one. Um, another one is um, Season of the Witch. Uh, so this is a period of exhaustive study that I don't have a time to talk about at this time, given the short time I have. So I'm going to just talk about a very few things. Uh, this was the era of better living through chemistry. Uh, Hundreds of thousands of young people flocked to the Haight-Ashbury District of San Francisco uh, with a philosophy of better living through chemistry. Uh, LSD was being synthesized by uh, 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 Stanley Osley. Uh, this was the uh, hippie extension of the beatnik movement. And I was running the alcohol and drug abuse screening unit at San Francisco General Hospital. The city of San Francisco said, we don't want the hippies. They put up signs, hippies stay home. Uh, they started flooding in and being part of that counterculture, civil right activists started the free clinic based in part on the philosophy of Martin Luther King, free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, I'm free at last. Uh, in other words, the beginnings of the free clinic and addiction medicine where a civil rights movement, I coined the term healthcare is a right, not a privilege, which is now part of the national dialogue in terms of healthcare reform. Uh, we saw overdoses, family breakdown, prescription, prescription uh, the uh, uh, variety of uh, medications, drug use was okay, the haves got treatment, there wasn't much treatment, the have nots got jail. We felt that uh, this was, uh, 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 ethically improper, and we felt that addiction was a brain disease since I was based at UC, and um, uh, uh, addicts had the right to treatment. Treatment was not, when we look back on it, was really quite primitive. Recovery was surviving a drug overdose. Um, we, we expanded uh, with uh, large problems that people had. I, I put this up, this was on the cover of Look Magazine in 1967, my malpractice insurance carrier saw that and canceled my malpractice insurance. He says, I didn't know you were treating those weirdos. So that's the era that I came of. One of my professors of medicine said, David, I, uh, where did you go wrong? I thought you were you know, a good, promising medical student. So that's the era that I came up. Law enforcement, uh, it's illegal to treat addicts. <coughs> How that has changed so dramatically is a very proud moment. These are the people that we get benefits for us, that we treated. They're all dead. Incredible wasted potential of uh, uh, great musicians in that era. Um, this is George Harrison of the Beatles that did a benefit for us with Ravi Shankar. And uh, this was a health care is a right, not a privilege. That was the operating slogan at that time. Uh, we also had uh, Carlos Santana and a number of others. So music then was very much part of the movement. Uh, things, of course, have changed uh, as it's uh, 
generalized and now you're mainstream and the sources of funding are not the Grateful Dead, but River Mend or whatever this funding organization is, uh, it, it's dramatically changed, which is for the better. Um, but it's not, uh, it, uh, what happened was that the sources of funding became government, Dr. DuPont and others. So we came out of that era of outlaws uh, into an era of mainstreaming. So uh, all for the better. Uh, acceptance of addiction is a brain disease. You'll get so much of this. We have a book out called Unchain Your Brain. This is the big advances of acceptance of addiction as a brain disease and implementation of those specifics. Uh, these are some of the belief systems that we have. The war of drugs focusing primarily on supply reduction has been costly and ineffective in California. Um, in California, they fill the prisons up so much that they now are releasing people. Uh, I am not an advocate of drug legalization. So that what we're talking about is a third paradigm of medicalization, which is an uh, intermediary between criminalization and legalization. Uh, although that early period was highly publicized, the drug problem is much greater now than it was in the past, much greater. You don't come to human beings in San Francisco to learn about drugs, you learn about it over the internet. And the marijuana is much more potent. Uh, the beginnings of the marijuana movement began uh, in part in San Francisco, and now it's all over the place. And the marijuana is much more potent. We're now in the middle of an epidemic of prescription drug use, and you have a lot of of uh, misdiagnosis. Uh, we had somebody that o overdosed on uh, alcohol and, uh, no, um, uh, alcohol, uh, uh, hydrocodone, and uh, Ativan, and the doctor called it the serotonin syndrome. We call it a drug overdose. Uh, continuing as this uh, unfortunate separation between the haves and the have-nots, I hope that this organization will find a, a, a gap between that and fill it. Uh, Medication-assisted treatment, expanded recognition for early intervention, SBIRT, I know that uh, Bertha has been focusing a great deal on that. Very important in the medical system because 100% of addicts and alcoholics will interact with the medical system. Only a few get uh, referred to treatment. The role of genetics, very crucial. Uh, as I was discussing, we had these thousands of young people exposed to drugs. We still see, we do all the medical services, the rock concerts, we do about 750 concerts a year, uh, 1,000 medical volunteers. It's clearly not just the drug. Lots of people will try drugs. Some will be a, a casual experience and have some adverse reactions, but just move on with their lives. Others will get stuck and have very serious long-term uh, adverse consequences. So I believe that it's an interplay of drugs, environment, uh, brain, including genetics, and uh, uh, social cultural in uh, environment. Uh, the recognition of addiction medicine and the treatment of addictive disease, one of the proudest things I have been involved in has been the acceptance of addiction as a mainstream specialty and the development of the American Board of Addiction Medicine. Uh, for those that are not aware of the, Ameri uh, the American Society of Addiction Medicine definition, well, I know most of you are. The, uh, the, probably the business community is not. There is a, an agreed upon definition of addiction and um, one of the big issues has been the acceptance of other behaviors based on brain science, the process addictions. We've published a lot about it. I know Mark's one of his great works, uh, sex addiction, food addiction, uh, internet addiction. We see that as a major premorbid issue in adolescent addiction. So that uh, basically if you follow the brain and see where it goes, then you'll find all sorts of other things. And we're finding out that, particularly with adolescent addiction, that the pre-morbid uh, process addictions are co
comorbid with the onset of substance abuse. Therefore, the, the alterations in brain function occur. There's my second click. Soon Garrett will loom. Uh, that's a frightening experience, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> Gee. 